Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be doing my all hands on deck campaign playthrough of Spruance Leader. And what I mean by all hands on deck is I'm using as many of the expansions as I can. So that includes uh, basically the carrier expansion and the allies expansion, but not the submarine expansion because that plays out a little bit differently than this one does. Uh, well, than the other two do, I should say. So we are going to be playing this campaign right here, the Med slash Black Sea Deterrence, Cold War 1988. As you can see right there at the top, it does say use Atlantic and Allied ships. It is a carrier campaign because we will be using carriers. It is designated as hard, and the uh, description reads, the Soviets are massing on the border to prepare to march into Germany, as well as troops preparing to attack Turkey. The carriers have been assigned to take out key targets in an attempt to deter the Soviets from landing. Campaign notes, uh, draw targets 49 and 51 prior to assembling the target deck. Draw targets as normal on the first turn. If targets 54 or 55 are drawn, draw an additional target and roll for bomber attacks in each zone when that target is attacked. Okay. So skill levels, we get one newbie, two green, two average, one skilled. Any extras beyond that will be green. We'll do the medium campaign, six targets, 190 SO to begin. Our mission SO points will be 30. So we're going to start with five task forces and activity will be plus two. And we will be using, um, I'll have one, basically one NATO task force that will be comprised of ships from various NATO countries, and we will also have one United States Navy task force. Each will have its own carrier, and um, I will use them alternately. I will alternate them as we go through the campaign. Okay, so initial setup here. As said here in the campaign notes, I drew 15, 49 and 51, which are enemy air defense systems here. So as you can see, um, they have an improvement on the bottom, and so that effect will remain in, in effect until these two are destroyed. Now, on the campaign map, 49 is up here in, I guess, basically like Austria area, northern Italy, Austria area. Um, 51 is all the way over here in the Black Sea. So that one's going to be tough to get to. Um, so yeah, so 40, until I destroy both of these, they're going to add a minus two for all targets in, um, an air defense minus two for all targets. So that's, um, that's kind of a big deal because that makes them harder to kill. Harder to hit means harder to kill. So, um, it would be in my best interest to take that out as soon as I can. So I'm going to actually draw my target from the target deck here and we get... Uh, number 18, Enemy Wolf Pack. So this is five subs. I get seven victory points, and I'll reduce the activity level by one. I must destroy all submarines. If I fail to do so, my SO goes down by four um, until it's destroyed. So we'll go after that and um, see if we can't take that out. And I'll remember now that I've got these two air defense systems that I need to take out as well. We will be taking on the enemy wolf pack. So in order to take on the wolf pack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use my, uh, my NATO force for this. And what my NATO force consists of here, because it's right here in the first, um, right here in the first zone. So it's right here, um, and I will be using my, we start here basically at like Gibraltar, and I have my task force is at five, and my activity is at two. Um, I've seen some people put them over here, I've done that myself, I've started to just cover them up and I know what they are, so five and two basically. So I need to roll for the task forces. And since we have uh, five of them, which is kind of funny because I only have, they only give you four. Um, 
four counters. Well, they give you two sets of four counters, I guess. I have to find the other set now. <laughs> um, this game has a lot of counters in it. So, but in the meantime, let me roll a placement for these guys. So a five is here. A two is here. A 10 is over here. And another two is here. Okay, and um, I need to roll again, but I don't see those counters, of course. Where the hell are they? They're red, they should be easy to see. Damn it, oh, here they are. Okay, they were tucked in between some of my chit cups over there. Okay, so <laughs> another two. So we have three, three in here to deal with. Um, and as I mentioned, I am going to, now I'm reassessing this and maybe I want to use my US task force, which has a little bit more punch in terms of uh, the carrier itself. But you know what? We'll start with the NATO one. So I'm going to lay this out for you here. We have the Foch, the French carrier, which comes equipped. Here's the, here's the card for it. So it's a Clemenceau class carrier, cost me 34 SOs. Um, it comes with an F8 FN1 or F8 FN, one of them, one squadron, two squadrons of super et etendards. You can get a, you can also have an etendard uh, IVP, which is kind of the fighter version of it. And then there's also the Elise. And if you wanted to buy um, the SA321G, that would cost you four SOs. I elected not to do that. Um, so I have three squadrons. I have the, I have one squadron of, actually, no, I have four squadrons. This number of squadrons is kind of an optional rule, which I sort of have been using. But because this is a hard campaign, I'm actually going to, to go with four. So I have the, uh, the base four here, the F8. The two Super Etendards and the Etendard IVP. So those are, um, so here's the F8. F8 is an ASW aircraft. Here is our Etendard IVP. This is our fighter. And then we have our strike aircraft, the Super Etendard. Okay, and I'm probably mispronouncing these and I apologize. Um, I don't speak French, unfortunately. So uh, we'll fill out the rest here. So um, for our first screening force, we'll put the FMS Colbert C611. So this is also French. Um, along with it, I purchased the uh, helicopter that goes with it, the SA321G Super Freelong which is called Cupidon. And so that one will go in, uh, I'm just gonna put it here for now. Then I took the destroyer, German destroyer, the Rommel, the D-187. So here's the Rommel. Um, no helicopter. So it's also one of my Newbies, it uh, actually ended up with two newbies because I elected to downgrade one ship to upgrade another ship, and I'll get to that later. Then we have the Lupo F3, F564, which is a Lupo class frigate. It's Italian. It comes with its own helicopter as well. The AB, uh, oh, actually, I didn't purchase the helicopter for that either. Um, but the Lupo is going in here. And finally, we have the uh, HMS Argonaut, so a British frigate. This is a Leander-class frigate from the UK. Here he goes. And um, actually, that's the warrior version. He's actually a green. So here he is. Um, and I did purchase the helicopter for this guy as well. And that would be this. A Lynx Mark II, 
uh, Baldy, which has a cool name. I like that. So Baldy and Cupidon will be um, our helicopters. So I got a decent sized uh, task force here to to uh, to take on whatever comes our way here with the uh, with the activity uh, the encounters rather because we have three of them before we can get to our mission location. Luckily for us, our mission location is in the first the first zone, which is, uh, I guess, the French zone here, as it's labeled. So we do have a French um, carrier and a French cruiser, and we have a French commander. Debray is our commander. He has a defense focus. He's average. So he gets one fast action. He's, um, his stress is zero to five is okay. His specialized action is a fast cap. And he has your basic move task force, redeploy, ship action, um, actions. So that is the setup for this. Now, now that we know our target and we know that it's a submarine, a wolf pack rather, I'm going to go through and purchase my ordnance and finish setting up. And then we will get down to, uh, to fighting our battles here. Okay, so we are ready to go. So we have uh, three enemy task forces in our area, as we saw on the campaign map a second ago. So our top encounter card is surface. Air defense minus one. It's got three and five, uh, three hit points to be low, five to destroy, victory points two if we elect to attack it. So our activity level is currently plus two. So we roll and we add two and then that'll determine what we get here. So let's roll. We rolled a three, which is a five. So that would be none. So we actually dodged a bullet and I'll pull one of these task forces off my campaign map, put it out. Uh, we'll go to our next encounter here. So next encounter, also surface. Now this one looks like it's gonna definitely be a fight so we are going to I again I'm not going to hit it with my with my carrier we're just going to roll and see what we get so a two plus two is four so we get low now we flip her over and we get one ship and two subs so we have to draw our ships and subs here. So I'll draw my ship, one ship, and two subs. Okay, now we'll flip these guys over and see if they're starred. If they're not starred, I can actually ditch the, uh, the attack, but we do have a starred ship right off the top. The DDG Severomorsk, an Udaloy class destroyer. So I'll have to pull his, him, uh, his chit out here. Then we have, um, well, not his chit. I'll have to place him there. Then we have a sub, which is not starred, but it's the SSK B36 Foxtrot class. So this is a diesel sub. And then we have the SSN K247. This is a tough sub because this is a Victor 3 class. So this guy is going to be a, a tough nut to crack. So that's what we're, that's what we're dealing with here in this particular encounter so I need to place these guys out so our sub we have a starred sub and a not starred sub so we'll make our starred sub sub one and our not starred sub sub two and then our enemy ship is also starred so we'll roll for um, range starting range and our ship for placement gets a plus zero but we roll an eight so an eight is this band here um actually no i'm sorry it's in band six so eight goes here and we roll for our sub one he gets a two with a minus one for placement so that becomes a one which means he's in uh range three so he's here and sub two 
with a placement of minus two gets a five. That's so that's down to a three, but it's the same um, either way. It would have been, even at a five, it's still in four. Now we'll roll for azimuth. So a one is going to be over here. So he's already in a in a prime position there. Uh, sub two with a two, he's over here. So he also gets a, be a bonus in our ship. Rolls a six, which is here, I think. Nope, over here. All right, so there's our starting locations and we are ready to begin. We have enemy sub one and two and enemy ship one. Now, uh, the carrier, the order of operations for the carriers, it, it adds a couple things. Uh, the first thing you need to do is determine what you're going to launch that turn. That is the very first thing you do before even Sono Boys. And because I don't have anything that actually detects anything, it's, um, I really can't launch anything just yet until I detect something. So we won't be launching any aircraft from the carrier this turn. So then we go to Sono Boys, uh, which I don't have any. Then we go to fast task force actions. So the Colbert will launch the Cupidon. That counts as the Colbert's actions and the first action for the Cupidon. Action two, move here. Action three, move here. Action four will be an attempt to detect sub one, which is a Victor three and it gets a three for noise. So that's going to make it tough to detect. Our super Freylon Cupidon here has a plus one for sub, so that's gonna make it a two, essentially, for the noise the noise adjustment. So we need a five for level one, a seven for level two. And we rolled a 10, so we get level two detection on our sub here. So that's a good start. Okay, and the Cupidon gets, um, Cupidon rather gets one, uh, level one stress for the takeoff. Uh, so that was all four actions for him. So we can't attack, but we will be able to attack with the Rommel. Um, so the Rommel will attack as, and let's see, Rommel will attack with the range is uh, three. So at range three, Rommel can attack with an Azrock. So we have some Azrocks on board. We will attack with two of them. So two, we're gonna attack with two Azrocks here, two Azrocks. So um, let's see, the torpedo defense is two, but the detection level is two, so that cancels out. There's no range adjustment at three or four. So we're looking at base number here, so that's seven. So I need a seven on the first, but because I fired more than one, I can I only need a six on the second. First one's a 10, so that's a hit. Now this sub has a hull of two, so if I hit it again, I'll destroy it. So I just need a six or higher. And we rolled a six, so we destroyed this sub. So that's excellent. That sub has been destroyed. And what that does is that gives an extra XP to the Rommel for destroying it. So that will end the fast phase, and now we'll go to the enemy movement phase. And I'll do sub two first. So I rolled a 10, and sub two has a movement of minus one, so that makes it a nine. So that's flank or range minus one. So he's going to move up. And now we will roll for ship one. These are expended. Move them out. Ship one. Um, six. And a six for movement is range minus one. So he's going to actually his movement is plus two. That makes it an eight which is flank or minus one. So he's just gonna move up one. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't roll for this. At the top of this card, it says on an eight plus, 
Roll each turn, draw from chip, pull, fire two missiles at ship. So let me roll for this. And we rolled a seven. So when I roll, an, if I had rolled an eight, I'd pull a, a, a task force ship from the chit or one of the chits for the task force ships from the cup. And we would fire two missiles at it. Didn't happen, thankfully. So we move to their action phase. The sub will attempt to detect. This one has a contacts of one. So I'm going to pull one one shit here Let me pull one shit out and that shit is for task force ship one so that is the colbert so he's attempting to detect the colbert and then the colbert has a noise uh noise man management of zero we get a minus one for range and our um actually this is the sub isn't it so the sub still is zero for range but it does get uh so it needs a six for one or a nine for two rolled a four so no detection now we'll pull one for the ship and the ship gets also task force ship one so same thing um it's detection for the ship is uh, four for one, seven for two. Seven, so that's uh, two. Detect at level two, which means they get to attack as well. So since they get to attack, we look, we roll for how many missiles they fire. Here at the bottom of the card, you can see one to six is one, seven or higher two. Hopefully we roll low. I rolled a four. It's hard to see, but it's a four. So four means we're firing one missile. Missile defense for the Colbert is a one. The range is a minus one as well. So now we're looking at a minus two on his die roll. So he needs a seven for one hit. Seven for one. Oh, he's got a plus two detection level, though. So that's going to cancel that out. So five for one hit, nine for two. Six. So that's one hit. So pull from our damage cup. Torpedo size, side rather, stress two. So the Colbert takes a two stress. Grab a two stress counter here and drop that on the Colbert. Okay, so that completes their, their turn, and now we go to um, my slow phase. Now, I didn't use my commander in the first phase, so I do have that. But I'm going to use the Argonauts um, action to uh, launch my helicopter, and we'll go um, one, two, and we'll attempt to detect sub two. So we will put... Uh, we'll put a stress on our helicopter for takeoff on the, uh, for Baldy here. Now, Baldy has the MAD detection, magne magnetic anomaly detection, which is a seven. Um, sub two has noise management of two. So we need a nine, basically, is what this boils down to. We need a nine. We got a four. So no detection. Um, I think we that was one, two, three. Yay. Well, one, two, three, and the detection. Okay, so his turn is done. That was also the Argonauts action. So now the Lupo. The Lupo is going to launch. Um, no, the Lupo is going to attempt to detect our enemy ship here. And then that would allow me to launch a strike at it next turn. So we're going to attempt to detect it with the Lupo. So we get a minus one for range because it's at four. And its noise management is a zero. So that helps. So we need a six for level one or an eight for level two detection. And we rolled a five. So not good. We'll have the, uh, the Argonaut... Um, We'll use our fast action from the commander to have the uh, Lupo attempt a second, take a second crack at it. 
So same thing, a six for level one, an eight for level two. An eight, so we did get it. That's what I wanted to see. Level two detection, because now I can launch my aircraft at it. So that's going to uh, end our turn. So both of these will become detection one. We go down to four. I had it on three for some reason. Um, put it on four. Uh, these are both detection level ones now. So one and one. One and one. Come on, Butterfingers. All right, they're both one. Now our carrier, we are going to launch our uh, Super Entendard here for a one, one stress on the carrier. We're just launching one thing. One squadron of the Entendard for a uh, strike on the ship. The ship has a hull of one, so I really only need one head if I can get it. So we're rolling for our airstrike here. So that we have a few things to go through before we get to resolving that strike, but we do have an airstrike inbound now on our ship here. So um, in the meantime, we go to our fast phase. We skip Sono Boys. Fast phase, we will do... Um, well, we'll do our helicopters again. So Koopy Don will move in and attempt to detect this sub. Now, sub two has a noise rating of two. And the, uh, the Super Freelon helicopter attacks at 359 with its dip. So we are going to have... Uh, let's see, a five or, or a seven. Five for one, seven for two. Roll the four. And a ten. So we get two detection on here. We use two actions. And that leaves us with one action with which to attack. So we will attack now with our, um, with our fray line. We're going to drop two L4 torpedoes. Uh, actually, we can't, now that I look at it, because it's a range of 2-3. So he can't attack. Um, but Baldy can. Well, we'll just, use, we'll just move to the Colbert, and I'll have the Colbert fire. Um, the Colbert can't fire at it, but the Colbert can fire at the, de at the Destroyer. So the Colbert is going to launch one of its M... Uh, actually, it can't. It doesn't have the range for that. Okay. So. Um, hmm. Well. We'll have the Rommel do something instead. So the Rommel will fire... Uh, we'll fire two Azrocks, I guess, at our sub up here. So he's detection two, and the Azrock is attack uh, rating of seven. The torpedo defense for that submarine is one. So we're looking at needing a six for the first Azrock and a, a six for the first Azrock and a five for the second Azrock after adjustments. The first one's a nine, which is a hit, which will sink him because he only has a hull of one. So he has been, he has been sunk. So yes, he's been sunk. So the Rommel gets its second kill of this mission. This one's not a star, a starred vessel. That's this guy right here. Now been sunk as well. So we'll take him off the board. And we now go to uh, 
Well, I guess the Colbert doesn't have anything it can really do. Uh, the, the MM-38 missile it carries does not have enough range to hit the ship. So it's going to pass, I guess. And we'll go to their movement phase. So ship one rolls an eight, nine. Rolled a nine. So nine with a plus two is an 11. So that's going to be range minus one and ping. So range minus one. And ping. Okay, so our ship will um, will attack. So he's got the Colbert in his sights. We'll roll for how many missiles he fires. One to six is one. Seven or higher is two. So six. He fires one missile at the Colbert. Colbert has a missile defense of zero. So it's a five to nine from two to four. So five for one damage to uh, nine for two. Roll the six, so that's going to be one. And pull one out. This time we want the missile side. And we get fire, no actions repairable. So we'll put the Colbert there and put that on the Colbert's card. And we know that we can uh, attempt to repair it. So that's their only action because they only have the one ship left. And so we move on to um, the slow phase. So we have the Lupo and the Argonaut. So the Argonaut's helicopter, the Baldy, he's here. So he can move one, one, two, I guess this is three to get to there. And he can, he can attack. Um, with some Mark 46 torpedoes. So we'll fire one and hope for the best. We'll fire one, hope for the best. So we're gonna fire one Mark 46 torpedo. Detection level is one. His noise management is two. So we're looking at a uh, minus one on the die roll, which means we need an eight. We need an eight. Oh, wait. Uh, actually, we need a seven because the Baldy has a plus one for sub. So we need a seven. We got a one. So no hit for Baldy. Uh, Lupo. Lupo's out of range to attack with its, with its torpedoes, as is the Argonaut. So we'll use our fast action here. Uh, for our commander to attempt to repair Colbert. So the Colbert has a repair rating of eight, eight plus. So eight or higher, eight, nine, 10 will repair the Colbert. I rolled a six. So the Colbert remains on fire and can do no actions. Uh, so now we go to the uh, carrier actions, which is our strike. So our strike on the ship here. So. The way this works is we would um, we get this out here, get out our handy dandy attack thing here. So um, they don't have any any cap. They don't have any cap, and. Um, Yeah, they don't have any cap. So, what do we do here? No air escort. So we're going to strike. We launched one, one of our super Etendards here. Um, so as you can see, it's the, uh, the the darker blue at the bottom. So I need a five for one hit, a seven for two, and I get three three attacks. So its missile defense is one, so I need a six or an eight. Six for one damage, eight for two, and I get three. And I only need one hit to kill this thing. We rolled a one. We rolled another one. Come on, man. And a seven, hallelujah. All right, so we sank. We sank the Severomorsk. Um, which is starred ends the um, ends the encounter, 
and that will be a uh, an XP for killing that that will go to the carrier. So the Foch and the uh, Rommel both get an XP. Now from the encounter itself, um, we get three SOs for destroying all the ships and subs. So that will end this, and I will make notes here on my um, my log, which I'm using Excel uh, for, and uh, so I will update that, and then we will uh, we will take a peek at it to see where everything stands following our first real encounter, and now we'll have a we'll pull the next encounter uh, before we actually get to our target. I just realized I didn't show the event card from before the. Uh, before the mission, it was this one. Fighter cover, fighters provide fighter cover, no enemy aircraft. So that, that wasn't applicable for this mission. So I didn't even bother to mention it. Our post-mission event, though, was kind of nice. We gained four SO points for fleet resupply. So that's where we are as we stand here. Um, looking at our um, task force log here, we do have the, uh, the Foch and the... Rommel both gaining um, XPs as far as um, stress goes. Uh, the uh, the Colbert and the Rommel each get two. Um, neither of those have any cool. The Foch also um, the Foch gets one, also has no cool. Now technically. Um, when you're in the, the protected force area, you're supposed to get minus one stress, but I heard Dean Brown say that uh, he's actually gonna change that rule because that ship can actually take actions, which makes sense. So I'm gonna leave it as one stress for its launching of its um, strike there in the middle of the, uh, of the mission. And so the stress for the Lupo and the Argonaut, they each get one. So they all have, uh, so the Colbert and Rommel are at two. The, um, actually the Colbert is at four, I think. Yeah. So they're at four. Colbert's at four. The, um, the Rommel's at two. Lupo and Argonaut, one each. The, uh, the helicopters, the Cupidon and the, uh, Baldi are both at one. And that is that is that. So we will move on to our next um, next encounter here on the um, on the map, the campaign map. There is one more task force remaining. That is uh, one more task force encounter here. That is this guy right here. Another surface um, air defense minus twenty three. That's probably a typo. I'm going to assume that's supposed to be minus two. I'm going to try, I'm going to just enca do the, do the encounter again. I'm not going to launch a strike at it. Um, I don't think it's worth the stress given the, um, the fact that they have those two, um, improvements where their air defense goes up by two. So, um, we're just going to, we're just going to roll for this guy. So the activity level is two. We rolled a three, so that's a five, so it's still low. So we flip it over. Low is actually no attack this count encounter. So that's um, that's cool. I'll take that. So um, we get to go on to our to our mission target, rather the target encounter here. There was one more thing I needed to do um, at the end of the last encounter that I did not do, and that's to try to repair the Colbert. Um, so it's, it's repair number is an eight, five. All right. So we're ready for our target here, our mission target. So this is, um, enemy wolf pack, just to, uh, refresh your memory. Enemy wolf pack, it's five submarines. We get seven victory points and reduce that, the activity or move the activity track one, one level to the right. Um, if we fail, then they get an improvement that's going to cost us four SOs until we do destroy it. So I rearranged my forces a little bit. I took the Colbert, which has a fire that I didn't, unfortunately, was not able to put out. He's going back to the protected area. Um, I'm going to use my commander 
actions to see if I can get him repaired, which would then let me move him up into the main force, hopefully. I bumped the Rommel back to the main force um, and moved the Argonaut and Lupo up. So basically, Argon, both of these guys were back here. They moved up. Uh, the Rommel basically went there for mostly for uh, stress purposes, to take one stress instead of two. Just a little stress management. Um, it's it's also, you know, it's still capable of, of, of participating in the mission for sure. Uh, the other thing I did was I had, I moved the uh, the this SA three twenty one G helicopter, the Cupidon. I moved him uh, from the Colbert to the Foch, so he can operate off the carrier. And this way, uh, the fact that the Colbert is out of action in this, at least to begin this mission um, or engagement, I guess uh, would be the right word for it. That won't kill me too much. So what are we taking on here? What are these five subs? Well, we have two that have starred. So here is sub one. Sub one is a Victor one class. So it's got a hull of two. Um, it's going to fire two torpedoes more often than not. It's also, uh, well, it's a, it's a decent sub. It's not great, but it's not bad. Sub two is our other starred sub. This is an alpha class. So um, another one with a two, two hull, so it'll take two hits to kill it. It also, if it can get within range one, it gets the it gets to use the, its uh, Schval torpedo, which will give it a uh, a much better chance of doing damage. And then sub three is a Charlie two class, the K four fifty two. This one actually has missiles, so it can attack from out to range five. So this is one I probably will want to knock out as quickly as I can. It has a hull of two as well. Then we have um, a Tango class, sub four. So Tango class, one hull. This is a relatively straightforward opponent, the SSK. It's a diesel boat, B380. So um, a little bit, uh, it's actually fairly new in terms of the, the era. It's from 82, and this is an 88 campaign. And last but not least, we have an Echo class, which is another um, missile sub, which can attack out to range five. So we have a couple missile subs here, which um, kind of ups the ante a little bit on being able to uh, to damage our ships. Uh, so it's I, I really need to concentrate on detecting these guys and getting them as early as possible. Now, um, I did draw my event card, and it's an interesting one. So we have bad weather. All ship detection attempts, even from subs, have a minus two DM. So this actually helps me because it's going to make it harder for them to detect me. And it says ship detection, not sub detection. So um, that's going to mean, to me at least, that means I don't have to have that DM when I'm trying to detect the submarines, but they have it when they're trying to detect my ships. So that, uh, to me, that's in my that's to my favor, I think. Uh, so other than that, I believe we are ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, the carrier aircraft phase. And I'm going to launch the Cupidon here. And then we will move. Uh, so that's one, two, three. And I'm going to stop here, I think. Um, I mean, I could move them up. And yeah, we'll move them up. This way, if either of these two stay put, I can um, detect them on my next turn. So then we go to the fast phase. So we have the Argonaut, which also has a helicopter. It's going to launch Baldy. And Baldy's going to do, uh, we'll, send, we'll send Baldy towards one of our missile subs. So we'll send him this way. So he's going to end up here next to sub five. So sub three and five have missiles. And I want to take those out as quickly as possible. So that's going to put a stress on both uh, the, both helicopters and counts as the action for the um, for the ship as well. So that leaves the Lupo. So the Lupo can detect subs out to range three, which we are not at range three, so it can't detect anything. So with that being the case, we are going to end 
our phase and move to their movement phase. Okay, so first of all, sub one, our Victor one class has a movement of plus three. Roll a two, plus three is five. That is range minus one, so he's going to move up. Now sub two, the alpha has a movement plus one. Nine plus one is ten, so he's actually going to move up two and ping. So he ends up here, and he pings, which actually will make him easier for me to detect next turn with my helicopter, hopefully. Um, then we have uh, sub three has a movement of minus two. Four minus two is two. And this is a Charlie two. So it just stays put. It would not snorkel because it's not a diesel. Uh, sub four is a diesel. It has a plus two movement. Nine plus two is, um, where's four? Here he is. So he's going to move up two and ping as well. And now sub, uh, wait, I screwed this up somehow. So sub three, shoot. I did, I did three instead of, um, well, no, what, what did I do here? I screwed this up somehow. So sub three minus two. All right. He just stayed put. That's right. So sub five gets a movement of minus one. Rolled a seven. Seven minus one is six. That is range minus one. So he's going to move here right next to Baldy. So I'm in good shape for detection for the next, uh, next go around here. Um, all right. So now that we've done that, we go to actions. Sub one gets two contacts. So we grab our cup, scoop it up. In. Task Force ship is number seven. So that is the Colbert. So we'll put Colbert there. Now he is in the supported, so he gets a plus one to his noise management, which is a zero. So it's a one. He's going to get a plus one, so that negates it basically. So we're, our detect detection is going to be now he's also pinging, so he's going to use his active sonar. Uh, range two, four is level one, seven is level two. And he gets a nine, so that's, oh wait, 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 wait. Uh, he can't, I guess. Hmm, this is, a, uh, this is an interesting question. Because he's pinging, that's active. Uh, oh wait, he's not pinging, I'm sorry. I screwed this up. So it's going to end up being, uh, basically, it's going to end up being a two anyway. Uh, no, it's going to be a one. So this is sub one. He's got a four slash nine. But to get level one, because of there being no range adjustment and this being a plus one, he would need a 10 for level two. So he gets level one detection on our, um, on the Colbert. So that's one. Sub two gets one contact. And that's task force ship one. So that is the, uh, that is the Argonaut, which has a noise management of one. The range is four. So he's at the outer limit of his range. So he's going to need a six for one, a nine for two. And he got a 10, so that is a two. And so we do that. Now he can attack as well. So he will fire, uh, he can't attack because he's out of range. He needs to be at range two, so he cannot attack. So now we go to sub three. Uh, sub three gets detect of one, but he's uh, not in range to detect anything. His, his detect for mm -hmm. surface is five, so he cannot detect. So we go to four, who's at range two, gets one contact. And that is one. So he's also on one. So again, that's the 
Uh, Argonaut, which has a noise management of one, he gets a plus one to negate that. Uh, and another plus one, which I forgot to apply before, for being in the screening force. So it's actually, he needs a four for one and a seven for two. And he got a seven, so that's two. And he gets to fire. So this guy, one to seven is one torpedo, eight plus is two. So that's one torpedo. Uh, attack range one, two, he needs a, let's see. So Argonaut's torpedo defense is zero. Uh, he gets a plus one, so he needs a five. And got an eight, so that's one damage. And we get sub attack. Minus two repairable. So that hurts the Argonaut's ability to fire at them, which is great. Now we go to sub five. Sub five gets one contact. Also ship one. Actually, this is the carrier. Sorry, this is the carrier. He's at range four, so he can attempt the detection. No adjustment for range. And the Foch has a noise management of one. It's also in the screening or supported force, so it's the two. So he actually needs an eight to detect that level one. <laughs> Gets a nine. Are you kidding me? All right. Okay, so they detected everybody pretty much. All right, so that ends their, uh, their round. And we go to the slow phase which is the Rommel. And the Rommel has a range of three for um, attack. So let's see here. Um, for detection, it has a range of three as well. So we're gonna try to detect sub four here. So, um, or should we attack somebody? I don't have any Azrox left, but I do have some Mark 46s, which have a range of two, but he's undetected, so I can't attack him. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to detect sub four. We are going to, uh, let's see. So he's at range two, so that's a plus one. He's also pinging, so that's a plus three. So that's plus four. So the Rommel needs a two for level one and a four for level two. We got an eight, so he's detected at level two. And so what we'll do now is we will use our commander action, which I passed from fast to slow, which is what I typically do anyway. And I'm gonna have the Rommel fire um, two torpedoes at this guy because I want to take him out. He's got level two detection on the Argonaut, which I don't like. So we're going to fire two Mark 46s and hopefully knock this guy out. He's only got a hull of one. So we're firing two of these guys right here. So we get a plus two, plus one is three. He's got a torpedo defense of one. So we're getting a plus two total. So plus two total, the Rommel has a zero for sub, so no, no, nothing there. So we need a five uh, and then a four if we don't hit with the five. We got a two and a 10. So we did destroy him with the second torpedo. So he has been destroyed. So four is dead. Four is dead. And these guys go away. And that ends the slow phase. So now we go to um, decrease detection levels. So this becomes a zero. 
this becomes a one. And this becomes a zero. And we decrease our battle turn to four. So there are four turns remaining. Uh, sub four has been killed. And that ends our turn, so we are ready to go back to the carrier now. Um, and again, I don't have any submarines detected this turn, so I can't launch any... Uh, I can't launch my F8 FN, which has anti-sub capability, so I can't... I can't launch that. I have to, uh, to wait to launch. So we will move on to the fast phase. All right, fast action. So we're going to start with our helicopters. I have Cupidon here. He's going to try to detect um, sub two. So sub two has a noise management of zero. Cupidon has uh, dip sonar, so he's got three five three slash five slash nine. So three for level one, five for two, nine for three. We get a two, so that's nothing. So I'm going to use my second action. Try again. Got a seven that time, so that would be detection level two. Um, oh, actually, now that I look at it. He pinged, so his noise management was a minus three. So our first roll being a two would have actually been a five, which was level one detection. Um, actually, no, that was level two. So I'm just going to ignore this seven and say that that was his first action. We're going to put a level two. That was not the right one. Grab the right shit here. Put this under here. Oops, level two. Put him there like so. It's a little crowded here. Then for our second action, we're going to fire on him. We have uh, L4s, <clears throat> L4 torpedoes. I'm going to fire two of those. They need an eight to hit. Um, as you can see, they need, oh, they have range two, three. Well, that sucks. All right, so belay that. Um, I guess I could move him to and then fire. So we'll do, we'll do that, I guess. We'll go, uh, it's a little hard for me to tell what um, the range, like, is this three away? Because I could go, you know, like, I mean, I guess it is. I guess it's one, two. So from here, but then again, I should probably go like here, I guess. So we'll go here. Now he's two away. I've used three actions and we're going to attack. So we're going to fire our two L4s. As I just mentioned, they have a range of two to three. They, uh, the, the base hit number is eight. This guy has a, a hull of two. We're going to get a plus two for the uh, detection. So that makes it a six. His torpedo defense is one. So we need seven. Seven on the first, six on the second. We got a seven on the first. So that's a hit. And a ten on the second. So we have sunk sub two here. Sub two has been sunk. And that goes to that kill goes to the coopy um to the coopy done. So that'll get applied to the carrier because he's currently flying off the carrier. Okay, so moving on to Baldy. Baldy will attempt to detect sub number five there. So let's see, sub five has noise management of one, 
Baldy has the mad detection, which actually um, says it doesn't count if you fly over, it doesn't count as an action um, in the rule book. I've been using it as an action, so I'm going to actually assume it is an action. I'm just going to roll for it. So we need an eight, I guess. Uh, actually, no, we need a seven because he gets a plus one for sub. Roll the five, so that's one, that's a miss, or non-detect, that's a non-detect, that's a non-detect. All right, fourth action, we got a nine. So we did detect him at level one. Um, this ping goes away too. That ping was from sub two. Okay, so now we have our ships, so the Argonaut, Argonaut does, let's see, the Argonaut's out of range for firing, so we will attempt to detect sub one. Noise management is one, no range adjustment. The Argonaut gets a minus one from the ship card, but a plus one from being in the screening force, so that uh, washes out. So that, and, uh, so that leaves us at, at the base, basically. So that's a four for level one and eight for level two. We got a six, so that's level one detection. Level one detection. See, I really wanted to try to repair the Colbert with my commander action, but I could use my commander action to move the task force, pull everybody closer, which would actually put the Lupo in firing range. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use my commander action. We're gonna move everybody up one here to try and get try and get to uh, well we are within range now so Lupo is going to fire two Mark 46's at our sub here so the Mark 46 base hit number is seven the range is up to two now uh, Lupo gets a minus one for the uh, from its ship card, we get plus one for range, plus one for detection. So that's going to be a six for the first one and a five for the second one. And this needs two hits to be sunk. And we rolled a five, which is nothing. And a two, so no hits. Damn it. Okay, um, so now we do their movement. So sub one, roll the one, gets a plus three, that becomes a four, which is patrol. So they stay put. Sub three has a movement of minus two. Roll the seven becomes a five, which is range minus one. And sub five has a minus one. Roll the five, which becomes a four, which is patrol. So sub five stays put. So now we do the attacks. So sub one has detected uh, task Force Ship 7, that is the uh, Colbert. 1 to 4 is 1 torpedo, 5 plus is 2. Rolled a 6, so then he's going to fire 2 torpedoes at the Colbert. Okay, so his base to hit is uh, 5 for 1 damage, 9 for 2. Um... His missile defense for the Colbert is going to be a two because he's in the protected force, but there's a plus one from range. So that be, so the net modifier is a one. So therefore he needs a six for one hit and nine, or, or a 10 rather for 10. And he rolled a one, so no damage. For torpedo one, torpedo two, we get a six. So that is one damage. We get near miss, one stress. So Colbert's stress goes to five, which puts him on the verge of being shaken. Okay, so we move on to sub number three. So they are at range four. They can detect surface ships up to range five, so we're going to draw a contact. They only get one. 
and we get Task Force Ship 3, which is the Rommel. So the Rommel uh, gets a shit, no, no noise modifier. So 3 is going to detect on a, there's no range modifier either, so 6 would be detection level 1, 8 will be 2. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So now we get to take a shot at them so they can attack because it's detection two. So uh, from range three to five, it's, to it's missiles actually. So one to seven is two missiles. Eight plus is three missiles. And of course it's eight, so it's three missiles. Um... Okay, so Rommel's missile defense is zero. There's no range adjustment. So they need a seven for one hit, nine for two damage. Miss. 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 Wow, Woo. that was close. All right. Now sub five has detection on the carrier, the Foch, so he will attack. Uh, he is at range three, so he is also at missile range. One to five is one missile, over five is uh, two. So that's two missiles, roll to seven. Uh, so the missile's base hit is seven slash ten, and the Foch gets uh, missile defense plus one, it or and it, yeah, so it's got a plus one, so he needs an eight. For, an, for a hit, and he can't get a two damage. There's one, that's a miss. Two is a miss. So we dodged some bullets there, that's good. So now we go to the slow phase. So we have the Rommel, and the Rommel has two 46s left, two Mark 46s left. We will attack sub number one. So sub number one is we get a plus one on range. The Rommel gets, uh, it's a zero for ship. So there's no ship modifier. Um, so we're getting a plus one with a plus one for detection is a plus two. And the torpedo defense for the Victor one is a one. So we're getting a plus one on our roll. So we need, we're firing two. So we need a six on the first and a five or better on the second. So we got the first one is a hit. It was a six. The second one is a nine. So that's two hits. So we've destroyed sub one, which is a starred sub. So the Rommel will get an uh, experience point for that. And let's put, I'm gonna put the sub one shit on there to denote that he sent, he's the one that sank that sub. And so that ends, uh, that ends that. So now we decrease our detection level. So this becomes a one. And we decrease, we're at battle turn three, three, three battle turns remaining. Start the new turn. First thing we do is our carrier actions. Okay, so our carrier actions, we're finally going to be able to launch because we do have a detection on a sub. So we will be launching the Foch's uh, anti-submarine squadron, which is an F8 FN. So this guy right here is ASW, and we'll be attacking with uh, needing a five for one damage, a seven for two, and three dice. So we are going to launch that. So we have a uh, we have our ASW counter here that we'll put next to sub five to say that we're attacking that guy, and you resolve that when we get to the um, we get it after the uh, the slow the slow action phase. Okay, so. We we'll move to fast. We have our helicopters. We're gonna have Cooper Don move in and try to detect sub three. So that'll be one, uh, two, and he gets again. He gets a free detection on the move because he has a magnet magnetic anomaly detector. Oh, actually, no, Cooper Don does not because he's got the dip. So forget that. He's got the dip. It's the Lynx Baldy that has the the mad detection. So we will have the. Cupidon, uh, 359 for detection. And he rolled a 1. So I have one action left. Hopefully we can get a detection. 
got a nine, so that's detection level three. So that is a good one. This will hopefully be good enough for me to kill these last two subs and finish this uh, target engagement successfully. All right, so Coupidon's done. We'll go to Baldy. Uh, Baldy has, well, he's here. One, two, three. Well, actually, no, wait a minute. Baldy can go one, two, and then have the ability to fire at sub three. So we're going to do that. Baldy's going to go one, two, and he's going to fire his two remaining Mark 46s at sub three. Again, we're firing these guys right here. Uh, so no range adjustment. We get a plus three. And his torpedo defense is two, uh, one. So we get a plus two total. So that would be five for the first torpedo and four for the second. He also needs two. He has a hull of two. So we need two hits to destroy him. So we rolled a 10. That is a hit. So he's got one damage. And now if the second one is a hit, and I only need a four. Second one is a hit, he's destroyed. We got a six. So that kills sub three. Mm -hmm. All right. That worked out. Not a starred sub. So no extra XP for Baldy there. Okay, so that moves us to uh, our ships now. So we have the Argonaut, which has a minus two sub attack, but it's repairable. So I'm going to try to repair it, even though it's <laughs> I need a nine. So this probably won't work, but we're going to take a crack. At it. And we rolled a ten. So the torpedo sub attack repairable is fixed. So that takes care of the Argonaut. Now we've got the Lupo. The Lupo, uh, he is out of range at the moment. I am not going to move up. We're just going to move to the enemy movement phase. So sub five. Sub five has a uh, movement of minus one. Roll the one. So he's going to patrol and not move. Now his, um, his attack, we got um, one contact. So he's going to try to detect somebody. And we get the carrier. So the carrier, again, has noise management of one. He is in the protected zone, so he gets another one. So that's two. No range adjustment on the sub. So he needs an eight for detection. Roll a six, so no detection. Okay, now, his, uh, now we move to the uh, slow phase. With the Rommel, the Rommel is out of anti-submarine um, <laughs> ordnance, so he can't really do anything. We'll move to our commander. We'll move to the. We'll let the commander do his action, which is going to be to attempt to repair the Colbert. So I need an eight or higher. I've been rolling pretty well this game, but this is a big ask here. And we rolled a three, so Colbert remains on fire. Um, <laughs> Now we'll resolve our attack. So what we would typically do in this situation is we have this carrier airstrike card. You could put the card for the target on there like so. Um, and then we would put our aircraft on here. And so there's no enemy air defense for this one. Um, there are markers for those somewhere, which I have misplaced at the moment. So here's, so our air defense would be zero and our hits are zero. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have a five for one hit, seven for uh, two, and we get to roll three dice. So there's no real adjustments for this. So we're just going to roll, because he has a zero for torpedo defense. So five will be one hit. That's a miss. That is two hits, which will sink him. He's only got a haul of one. So he has been sunk by our F8. And that actually will wrap this up. We have defeated 
this target. So that target has been defeated. He's he's sunk. That goes back. Um, sub five. Our helicopters will return and land and pick up one more stress. And uh, that will end this, um, this particular engagement. So here we have a card for it. We gain seven victory points, activity level or activity lo uh, location on the campaign map. We'll go down by one. And that's it. So we've destroyed this target. So here is our campaign map. So our activity level would actually move here. Task force stays there. So the carrier Foch has uh, six stress. The uh, Colbert has four. The Rommel, Argonaut and Lupo, three each. The helicopters each have four. Uh, that's our current status. Um, as far as XP, we do have some promotions uh, that have, um, that will need to be taken care of. Uh, so I will do that um, after this because it really doesn't matter for what I'm about to do. And that is I'm going to move into this area here and try to take out this 49 air defense system right here. Try and take this out um, while I'm already out because it gives them an air defense of minus two for anybody that's in this zone. And when I go to the U.S. task force for the next mission, there's a reasonable chance, pretty good chance, because there's only two targets in here, aside from these guys, that they're going to have to transit at least through that zone. So we will be doing a uh, carrier strike attack. So we moved our task force in. We are going to hit this air defense system. We know it has a minus two. And we know we have zero hits. So um, I'm going to launch three squadrons at it. And we're, two of them will be the Super Etten Guards. And I'm also going to use my Etten Guard AVP, even though it only has a ground attack of six and only one attack. Because. Um, this, uh, this needs to be destroyed by six hits, so it's going to take a little bit to do that. So the way this works, if you didn't watch my, my uh, previous videos, um, or, what, well, I guess you've seen it in this one as well. So air defense is minus two, so we're going to subtract that from our roll before we apply any other modifiers. And in this case, we don't have any other modifiers. The Foch does not have and um, basically cannot have, I guess it could, what's, anyway, regardless, it does not currently have a, um, an AEW squadron, and actually it's not available. Uh, we, the only things that this carrier can carry are uh, the fighters, strike aircraft, and two different types of um, anti-submarine aircraft so for now we're just going to uh to go with these three attacking so looking at their attack ratings with a minus two they're going to need a seven for one hit a ten i mean a nine for for two hits two damage uh for the su super etendards the etendard ivp will need an eight and if we roll a two because they have zeros here for their uh, air defense, if we roll a uh, a two, then they're going to get a step loss. So this is a little bit risky. We're also adding three more stress to our carrier for doing this, but I do want to uh, see if I can do this while I'm here and while I've cleared out a path to it prior to going to the U.S. task force. So we're going to start off here. So we need um, we'll do the Etendard IVP first. We need an eight did not get it we got a six okay so now we go to the the super and darts here that's not going to do it that's not going to do it that's not going to do it so now we go to this one no there's one that's actually two hits 
and third roll a six which is not a hit so then um you keep going basically turn after turn they don't have any uh strike systems and i didn't roll anything i didn't roll any twos or did i i don't think i rolled any twos so we're going to start the sequence over an eight for, for the ivp is a third hit nine is two hits so we only need two more another nine so that will do it and we destroy the enemy air defense system so we took care of that and we will now or return to base and end this phase and i'm going to wrap this video um i'm not sure if i'll do the american uh campaign I want to see uh, if you guys are interested in seeing that, what, um, you know, what you think about. If there's interest in seeing me do uh, continue this campaign, I really do enjoy this game, but there are other games that I want to do, need to do. Um, so for now, I may, I may wrap this up unless, you know, in the comments, if you wish to see more of this, please let me know and I'll take that into account. As far as determining whether to continue, um, I may continue anyway, just not shoot it as videos because if there isn't enough interest to uh, to make it to make the video, the video is more effort than um, just playing the game. I also tend to make less mistakes when I just play it because I'm not trying to talk and explain what I'm doing at the same time and missing things. So, having said all that, I am going to wrap it up now. Thank you for watching. My name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. Please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing if you would. That would be outstanding. But until next time, happy gaming.